Hello, everyone, and welcome to our seventh web seminar of the series of Latin American webinars on physics. Uh, my name is Federico von der Palen from the High Energy Phenomenology Group of the University of Antioquia in Medellin, Colombia, and I will be your host today. Our speaker is Sergio Lopez Gela from the Technische Universität München in Germany. Um, uh, he's um, at the moment finishing his undergraduate, his graduate studies, his PhD um, in the theory group of Alejandro Ibarra. Um, Sergio's talk today is titled Probing Dark Matter Models with Novel Gamma Ray Features from Cascade Processes. We are glad to have him as a speaker today. Um, we remind you that you can be part of the discussions, writing questions and um, comments using our Q&A system and on Twitter with the hashtag WLAW. Uh, OP, and I will now hang you over to Sergio. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Federico. And uh, now I'm going to uh, going to share my screen so you can see my slides. And going on full screen mode, and that's it. So I hope everybody can see everything OK. Uh, so uh, as Federico said, I'm going to talk about uh, some novel gamma ray features coming from cascade processes, which is uh, mainly my work during my, um, my PhD. So briefly, the outline of my talk is going to be this one. First, I'm going to do a very brief introduction on dark matter, a motivation on why spectral features in the uh, gamma ray spectrum are important, and then I'm going to go into my topic uh, presenting you this box-shaped spectra, and then comparing with experimental data and showing some uh, physical realizations and models. So I'm going to try to, very, to be very brief in this section of dark matter because uh, Last uh, webinar, uh, Miguel Sanchez Conde made a very good introduction, so I think I'm going to just uh, repeat the, the um, most important facts. So this is a very brief historical view of how the status of dark matter has been since the first uh, works done by this guy, Zwicky. And we've come a long way, uh, almost 100 years and 15 years, and uh, it's, kind of, it's been already a lot of observations that had uh, been hints for dark matter. We have the rotation curves and then also the structure formation and also the bullet cluster. And there are several others, uh, other observations that hint for dark matter. Uh, now I have here an, another way of presenting these hints, which I like very nicely and is a, a way of convincing also everybody about dark matter. And in, he, in here, instead of putting the time in this line, I put the size uh, of the uh, astronomical objects in which this uh, missing mass uh, observations have been made. And as you see, we have from uh, galaxy scales from about 10, 20 kiloparsecs, in the, uh, which have been seen in the rotation curves, to some uh, velocity distributions in clusters done by Friedrich Zwicky, the bullet cluster, which is one of the most clear hints for dark matter. And then we have some uh, observations at cosmological levels, such as the large uh, scale structures formation and the CMB uh, anisotropies. Um, here I'm trying to summarize. Um, uh, how we uh, how we summarize this uh, knowledge that we have here I'm presenting you this uh, current knowledge about the energy content of the universe and as you see most of, of these observations supernova CMB and clusters point to uh, a a larger amount of matter matter uh, in the in the universe and we have only from what we have observed only a five percent of baryons and we have an overwhelming amount of uh, matter, which we called dark matter, uh, which is 26% uh, 
of the energy content in the universe. And then we have the dark energy part, which makes a lot of, uh, uh, of energy content, most of it, and is related to the uh, cosmological constant lambda. And this is all very well summarized in the current cosmological framework that we've been calling uh, since um, a long time ago the lambda CDM model. Now, uh, in this uh, model, uh, dark matter has all uh, uh, even more clear properties. Uh, in the model, the lambda CDM model, the CDM stands for cold dark matter. And this summarizes the properties we expect dark, mat dark matter to have in this cosmological framework. First of all, it's cold, which, uh, by which we mean it has to, be, it has to have been non-relativistic at the time of uh, structure formation. Uh, it has to be dark in the sense it, has, it isn't allowed to have any uh, GSM charge, meaning it's a singlet under the uh, GSM group, and it cannot make, uh, be made of baryons. And third, uh, it has to be matter in the sense of it, has, it is subject to gravity, and uh, it's still out there. It still forms a part of, of, of our current status of the, of the universe. And then uh, there has been done a lot of work presenting possible candidates for dark matter. Uh, and there are here several, and there are even more uh, candidates that I'm listing here. This is one of, my, uh, of the most popular ones. And I'm going to concentrate on the, um, uh, for most of the, of the uh, astroparticle physicists, the most popular one, which are the WIMPs, which stands for uh, weakly interacting massive particles. And the, the, um, the interesting or the attractive uh, property of WIMPs, of uh, these particles, is that uh, they can be generated as uh, thermal relics in the sense that uh, at some point in the early stages of the universe, they were uh, in equi equilibrium from the thermal bath, allowing uh, annihilations and creation of dark matter particles and standard matter particles go in both ways. However, as the uh, universe cools down, this process is, un uh, is allowed only to go in one direction, meaning dark matter and leak to standard model particles, but they cannot go in the other direction. But at some point, the expansion of the universe grows, uh, uh, can um, balance this out, and the particles um, freeze out, and they uh, remain as a thermal relic. And we can see through some of the observations, uh, mostly from the CMB and isotropies, that uh, we expect to have a, a um, density uh, times the Hubble constant squared of 0 0.1. And this gives us uh, a, a tentative target th a velocity average cross-section uh, of what would be 3 times 10 to the minus 26. So we have a, a very good uh, production mechanism for WIMPs, and we have also some target uh, cross-section that we can aim with our experiments to look at. Um, now I'm going to talk about one of the uh, strategies we have for making a detection in which we could claim that we have spotted dark matter, and uh, this is the indirect detection. Uh, so we have mainly three um, strategies in detecting dark matter. Uh, first, we have a direct detection in which we try to measure a recoil of a scattering with dark matter particle with, an, with nuclei. Then we have uh, we uh, we uh, exp uh, we hope to be able to produce these dark matter particles in in colliders, and then we have the third uh, uh, strategy that I'm going to focus in this talk, which is indirect detection, in which uh, we uh, assume dark matter to be annihilating, and I want to hear uh, digress a little bit and say again that WIMP dark matter ensures this process this channel to be open. As I said, they were in equilibrium at, uh, in annihilation and creation of standard model particles. So this means that dark matter can still annihilate into the dark matter particles. Uh, so uh, how, we make, how do we make indirect detection? So we have, as I said, the production of dark matter annihilating into either gauge bosons or um, 
Higgs's or fermions or uh, any standard model particle, then we have the propagation of uh, the stable particles. Of course, if we create Higgs, it's going to decay. But then this uh, stable particles, electrons, pro protons, antiprotons, and uh, gamma rays can uh, propagate through the galaxy, depending on the charge, either in a straight line or through some complicated path. And then we are uh, expect to detect them in the solar neighborhood or in the Earth neighborhood, either here at Earth or in some satellites orbiting uh, around the Earth. So what possible targets do we have? As I said, we, we expect to, to measure some stable particles. And we have first uh, some antiprotons, positrons, or antideutrons have been very popular. But the issue with these particles is that they are tar charged. And they get entangled in the magnetic fields of the Milky Way, and they are subject to diffusion, uh, which makes, uh, makes uh, which presents, of course, a, a difficulty into pinpointing dark matter in these channels. Then we have a possibility of detecting the neutrinos. Neutrinos are not charged; they travel in a in a in a straight path, but they have the issue of detectability. Detecting neutrinos, as uh, a lot of people know, it's a not an easy task. I, well, in the end, it, uh, detecting none of these particles is an easy task, but neutrinos, neutrinos present a uh, special ch uh, challenge to, to uh, experimental physicists. And then we have uh, the gamma rays, which have the, per, the, perhaps the, 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 the downside that uh, the gamma rays are a suppressed channel in a dark matter annihilation, since dark matter is not charged. Uh, however, they have some perks. Uh, they don't diffuse, and they're easy de easily detectable. Uh, and they can be uh, emitted, depending on the dark matter model, either in a soft or a, or a hard spectrum. Uh, so I'm going to talk, uh, talk about a little bit about the uh, methods that we have for indirect detection. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to talk about the experiments I've been working uh, with, the data of experiments I've been working with. Uh, we have uh, Fermi, the Fermi telescope, uh, which is orbiting the Earth, which is able to detect at, uh, let's say, lower high energies of 0 0.1 up to 300 GeV. We have uh, the Earthbound HESS telescope, which detects higher energies, uh, which is an, a, an imaging area Cherenkov telescope, which detects higher energies than, than, than the Fermi telescope. And then the third uh, kind of experiment I've been working on is a next generation telescope, which, is, hasn't, which hasn't been built yet, but we're hoping uh, to get uh, data from this experiment as soon as possible. And this would be a very large experiment because it will be based in the southern and northern hemisphere, and it will have a broader band detecting from uh, some tens of GeV up to 100 TV, so a huge uh, energy range. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, as I said, the two uh, kinds of emissions that we have in gamma rays. We can have diffuse emission from uh, dark matter annihilating. Uh, and uh, the, the problem with diffuse emission is that it's uh, filled with uncertainties. And since the emission, as you can see here, this is just a, a, an example of uh, dark matter, dark matter to BB bar annihilation using this target cross section, uh, which is a property of the of the WIMPs. And as you can see, uh, it's very uh, the, the 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 background is huge. So if we were to claim a dark matter discovery in diffuse emission, we to have not only amazing statistics, but also have a very detailed uh, analysis of this data in order to pinpoint uh, uh, detection of flux that we are absolutely certain that it's uh, of uh, dark matter origin. Uh, on the other hand, we have spectral features. And the spectral features have a nice uh, property that they differ um, a lot from a parallel background. And we've been modeling the background that we have in gamma rays, mostly with with uh, with power loss or broken power loss. But this is, has been is is the main, and it's a very it's a good approach to model the, the background. However, if we have here, this is a, a log log plot, a power law, a, a negative power law, and we were to plot over a spectral feature, this would uh, clearly uh, be this would be clear to, to to see that it differs from a power law. So it would be a lot easier to 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 pinpoint an observation in 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 this in in this channel. However, of course, 
um, the 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 um, the, the uh, the background is still very, very large. So we, we also have to have a lot of statistics and a lot of, of, of uh, analysis. Either way, it, it, it presents a, 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 a challenge for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for us. Uh, the, uh, this this uh, spectral features have been called as a smoking gun, since it would be a clear hint for dark matter, as I'm trying uh, to, to tell you, that it uh, differs from this parallel background. And uh, currently, we have three uh, ways of generating these smoking guns using uh, a scenario of neutrally, uh, um, electrically neutral dark matter particles. And we have, first of all, the gamma ray lines, which are the most known um, features, which are generated via loop. We have also the internal bremsstrahlung, which is generated in when, uh, when we attach an external leg to uh, an annihilation of dark matter to, to fermions, and this produces also a bump in the end of the spectrum, so in, in the kinematical end of the spectrum. And the third is gamma ray boxes, in which I'm going to talk about from now on to the rest of my talk, which are produced very uh, easily in any cascade processes in which dark matter annihilates to some intermediate state, and then these intermediate states decays in flight to, okay, here I'm uh, uh, showing you uh, each in two gammas, but we may also have, of course, one gamma and one gauge boson. Or uh, The important thing is that we have here the uh, emission of an end-state photon. So I'm going to talk very briefly about uh, gamma ray lines. Uh, this uh, gamma ray lines, as you see here, we can uh, generate, uh, this is a plot that would, uh, flux that will be generated by a, direct, a loop annihilation of two dark matter particles into to uh, photons. However, the problem with gamma ray lines is that they, since they are loop generated, they are suppressed by a factor alpha squared. So this uh, this target cross section would have uh, for WIMPs gets translated into a much lower cross section, and this uh, proves to be more challenging for experiments. This is uh, uh, data that was released by the Fermi collaboration uh, two years ago, and okay, of course, the, uh, these results have improved, have been improved. But still, it, it, it will be long since we can get actually to this uh, a value of 10 to the minus 30 centimeters cubed per second. Uh, just I'm here uh, flashing what's the, there's, what is the status of internal bremsstrahlung. Uh, the issue here is that uh, since we attach uh, a, 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 a photon, we have an extra coupling alpha, and we have phase space suppression. So the, the, the target cross-section gets also translated to a lower value. Uh, and um, now I want to talk to you about the gamma ray boxes, which is the, the highlight of my talk. Uh, so I'm going to show first to you what is the, the mechanism of generating these gamma ray boxes. And as I said, in, also in the, in, the, in the title of my talk, we're considering cascade processes. So I'm going to consider the process in which uh, two dark matter particles annihilate into two uh, intermediate states, phi, and then this phi decays into a, a gamma ray and a, another particle x. Just uh, for, for for generalizing, um, uh, this could be also again a photon. Uh, the energy of this photon in the rest frame of this phi is uh, just uh, one half of this parameter delta m phi. Which this parameter delta is given by the mass differences difference of this particle and uh, the intermediate state phi. Of course, if we would had a decay of phi into two photons, we would have the uh, energy of this photon in the rest frame of this parent scalar into exactly one half the mass of the intermediate scalar. However, this is not the case. In cold dark matter scenarios, we assume we we we, uh, we assume that the dark matter is moving at non-relativistic velocities in the halo, which would mean that this particles, this dark matter particles are, are at rest in the, in the lab frame. However, this particles phi can be emitted with some momentum, which is given by the difference of the masses of these two particles. So uh, if we were to generalize, this particle phi has to, be, uh, uh, has to have a momentum assigned to it. And then if this particle phi has a, um, a momentum, then the monochromatically emitted photon in the restroom of 5 gets boosted. And depending on the 
emission angle of this photon, it can get a, a, a energy added or subtracted from it. So a, a very quick illustration how this works to uh, arrive at, at the spectral feature. So imagine we have a particle phi which is flying in the lab frame and it emits a photon. So it can emit, for example, in the forward direction in which uh, in relativistic uh, in the relati in the relativistic sense it gets its energy added and so we get uh, uh, an energy added to to uh, the, we get a maximal energy which is in a forward uh, emitted photon of course we can have a, a, a backward backwards emitted photon and this is had it uh, we, it's it would had its energy subtracted to it and we would had a minimum energy in which this photon can be emitted if we have, uh, if uh, since we have a scalar decaying, uh, this uh, emission can be in either di in in every direction in all of uh, four pi. So it can be also, for example, in this direction, and we would have some energy between these two kinematical ends that were given by the forward or backwards emitted photon. And since we have an isotropic emission of photons from the uh, isotropic decay of photons from this particle phi, we would have all of these energy bins, energy uh, values that the photon can gain, equally populated. And this would be, give rise, finally, to this boxed shaped spectrum, which I, I want to stress that I, have, I haven't assumed anything uh, in the particle model, uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the particle physics model. So this is just any cascade decay uh, in which the intermediate states decays into photons. Uh, this would be an example of how the signal would uh, would arrive at Earth, in which we convolute with the with the, with the resolution of the instrument. And uh, depending on the velocity of the of the of the of the of the, uh, of the scalar, the the these two kinematical ends are, are different. And of course, if the, if 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 the mass of the scalar phi is almost the same as the, of the dark matter mass, then this means that the momentum of this particle phi would be very small, which would mean that these kinematical ends are very close to this, this, uh, this center. And here I'm illustrating three of the cases we've, uh, I've been always uh, um, analyzing, in which we're calling narrow, intermediate, and wide cases. So this parameter delta is, uh, tr uh, translates the the mass difference between the dark matter particle phi and the uh, dark matter particle chi and the intermediate state phi. And in the case in which we had degenerate masses, so a very similar masses, we'd have what we called a narrow case because these kinematical ends would be very close to each other. And in, um, in the case in which this width goes uh, below the resolution of the instrument, this signal would be indistinguishable from a line. Uh, but if we had different masses, we would have uh, had uh, to, to. We have always cons we've considering to, uh, to other scenarios, which we call the intermediate and wide scenarios, uh, in which the the mass degeneracy becomes larger and larger, larger and larger, and uh, this box widens and widens. And of course, uh, it, it would be it would reach a case in which. Uh, the, um, the scalar phi is pretty much massless with respect to the dark matter particle chi, and then we had a very wide box, but still we would have this uh, right shoulder popping out. So this right shoulder has a clear um, shape, which is uh, not similar to, to a typical parallel background that we assume. So regardless of uh, which scenario we've got, so without the, the, the need of a fine tuning, we'd have always some kind of hard spectrum that uh, can be distinguished from a parallel background. This background I'm showing you, for example, is the background that we've modeled using several data from uh, different uh, different sources, so different gamma ray uh, different gamma ray uh, experiments that I've measured. And this is just some some example of, of, of what uh, uh, a model would generate. But this is a, a, a model that we have a model. Uh, a possible background that we would have that would look like this. So we would always have a, diff a spectrum which is different to this parallel background. Uh, now I want to uh, compare with some experimental data we have, uh, and uh, I want to present this in the way uh, as upper limits. So we have here two cases, wide and narrow, and uh, you can believe me that the intermediate case always lies between these two. 
And here I'm presenting uh, some results that we have uh, subtracted using a, a, a sliding window profile likelihood analysis. Uh, for lower energies using the Fermilat instrument and for higher energies using the HES telescope. And as you can see here, uh, if you look at the y-axis, we uh, can target um, very uh, quite low uh, cross-sections. Uh, however, depending on the exact model, uh, we can, could translate this uh, WIMP, uh, uh, um, this WIMP velocity average cross-section that we expect to different uh, scales. Um, what I'm going to show uh, afterwards. But this is just a first uh, uh, glimpse at uh, how uh, powerful this, this spectral features can be uh, when we want to uh, draw limits uh, using different data. Now we're going to talk about uh, one of the last works I've been doing, uh, I've done, uh, which, in which we derived prospects on this uh, next generation telescope, uh, the CTA. Uh, and first I'm going to show the, the most um, important results, I, I think, well, uh, the, the most uh, easy to the eye results. Again, we, we, we uh, performed a full uh, sliding window analysis using uh, 300 sets of mock data, uh, which would be expected to be measured uh, with the CTA instrument. And uh, using this data, we would be uh, able to draw uh, this, this limits for uh, these different cases, narrow, intermediate, and, uh, and wide. Uh, and we here I'm also showing the, the sensitivity I would get in order to claim a, an, an observation, a, a detection of a gamma ray box using the the CTA. Um, here I'm uh, showing uh, joint limits drawn by different experiments: the Fermilat, the the Hess experiment, and the the the, the, the here is the CTA telescope with uh, different w windows, uh, window widths. This, this two uh, sets of, of, of limits that we've drawn, th this is for, for, for the narrow case. And uh, these limits that I'm showing here were drawn uh, using uh, the limits themselves from the Fermilab collaboration and the HES collaboration. And as I said before, the, uh, since the narrow boxes are indistinguishable from lines, we can easily translate this uh, these limits drawn by by, uh, by these collaborations into narrow box uh, limits, and this is a, a, um, a plot in which we show a very large energy range from hundreds of uh, of of of, of uh, from tens of GV up to hundreds of of, of TV, and we can uh, and we can cover uh, so using this guy uh, this uh, boxes and with different instruments we can cover also almost um, two to three orders of magnitude. Of um, upper limits for the for the thermal uh, for the velocity averaged cross sections. Now uh, I want to go to a more uh, particle physics interesting part for, in the, for the last minutes of my talk, uh, in which I'm going to talk physical realizations in which this uh, this this uh, uh, boxes this cascading case can occur. Uh, so, as I said, uh, what I was saying before, what do we need for this gamma ray boxes to, to, to be generated? And it's quite interesting that we only need three ingredients. First of all, we need a stable or long-lived dark matter particle, which is pretty much a given from the Lambda CDM cosmological model. Then we need an intermediate state phi, which couples to this dark matter particle chi. And then what we need is a sizable branching ratio from phi into at least one photonic state. So if we have these three ingredients in any kind of model, uh, we immediately have a box. And we could even forget about this, sec this third um, ingredient, uh, about this, this part of a sizable branching ratio, because in the end, physically, we would have, of course, a box, uh, regardless of the size of this branching ratio. However, since the background is uh, huge, we uh, for a detection in our instruments, we need a size of a branching ratio of phi into photons. Uh, so, I want to show the concrete model that we called uh, A in the, uh, our last work, in which uh, we was presented uh, uh, some uh, years ago. And I'm sorry, I think this no, this 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 uh, reference is wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, but uh, it's uh, in a work that we did in, in the year 2013, in which we had a dark matter uh, fermion chi, uh, a scalar s, and a pseudo scalar a. 
in, in this model, um, we have three uh, decayed uh, annihilation channels of uh, dark matter annihilation, in which it decays to uh, either a pair of a pseudoscalar and a scalar, two pseudoscalars, or two scalars. Uh, and we have a branching ratio of the pseudoscalars into, phot into two photons of, depending on the uh, details of the model, of this pseudoscalar into uh, two photons of uh, between 20 up to 100 percent, uh, which is a very a, a big branching ratio enough uh, for, for, for current experiments to make a detection. Uh, so how this uh, how does this um, uh, model uh, work? This this model works in uh, in the sense in which we get a this dark matter particle chi, a complex scalar s, and through the pitchy cream mechanism we can get in the end a scalar s, a pseudo scalar n, and we open these three annihilation channels I was talking uh, about uh, just now. Uh, this, the masses of these particles are not given by the model. However, we can make some, 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 some uh, different scenarios. For example, in the case of a narrow box, in the case of the action is uh, very... Uh, the mass of the action is similar to the mass of dark matter, partic that dark matter particle. They would have a branching ratio of chi chi into the uh, scalar pseudo-scalar pair of almost 0.9%. And then we w uh, in the white box case, we would have a more uh, a balanced, uh, more balanced branching ratios among these three channels. However, we will we will always have a sizable uh, branching ratio into these uh, intermediate states, uh, into these intermediate pseudoscalars, which are the ones that decay in the end into two photons, and we want uh, our model to to have. So, uh, if we take this model, for example, and we calculate what would be the velocity average cross-section today, uh, we would uh, have, we will be able to um, draw these limits. So these black lines are the target cross-sections depending of, on the dark uh, matter particle uh, chi, on the mass of the dark matter particle. And um, as you see with the CTA, we're able to exclude uh, from a very small uh, regions up to quite larger uh, areas of our uh, of our uh, parameter space using um, and uh, using the using the CTA telescope and these are again this uh, target velocity average cross sections uh, that we drawn from a physically a plausible uh, particle physics model uh, so now I want to uh, uh, conclude briefly uh, and summarize what I've uh, told you today. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to tell you that the spectral features in the gamma ray sky would be an unequivocal signal of dark matter. And there are uh, uh, a lot of, 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 of uh, astroparticle physicists which, which are very, very uh, hopeful to detect dark matter in, in this channel. And it would be very nice because it would be as a, a very in, uh, uh, clear hint. However, still, if it's not observed, we can constrain uh, uh, a lot of scenarios that would give rise to these spectral features. Uh, gamma ray boxes are a third kind of spectral features uh, that we add to this uh, to the internal brain trailing and, um, and gamma ray lines uh, scenarios as, as uh, spectral features. Uh, that are uh, a, a, a very uh, interesting scenario, a very interesting kind of spectral features that don't need any kind of fine tuning, don't need any kind of of of, uh, um, of some uh, thought, uh, 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 it's just a values input uh, put it by hand to to work. So we always have gamma ray boxes, and regardless of the of the masses of this. Um, of these particles, which would be the only thing that would ever may be fine-tuned. In any case, we will always have gamma ray boxes. So we will always can we can always make some claims of models that have this kind of uh, scalar, uh, this kind of cascade decays. Uh, there are feasible models that uh, can produce this uh, gamma ray boxes, and uh, also there are uh, current experiments 
that now exist are able to constrain the win parameter space uh, of some models that uh, give rise to this uh, to these camera boxes. So I thank you all for your attention, and I'm going back to uh, my cam. Okay. Thank you again uh, for to Sergio for his interesting seminar. And um, now we pass the round of questions. And we remind you that you, you can be part of the discussion, writing questions and answers. And um, you can also you can ask questions via our Google Plus Q and A or via Twitter with the hashtag L-A-W-O-P. So um, let's now pass to a round of questions. So I have a, a question here. Um, I don't know, can, can, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. OK. Yeah, in, in, in the last, uh, in, in the conclusions, you mentioned that uh, it doesn't matter what kind of signature it's observed, you can always construct a model that can basically describe those features. So is, is, that, is that correct, or I just mm -hmm. misunderstood what you said? No, no, no. What I tried to say is that uh, kind of the opposite way. So in any model that would have this cascade decays, in this cascade decays and this sizable branching ratios into photons, you would have, in the end, a, a gamma ray box emitted. So it's not that you can construct always a physical model to it, but uh, if you construct a physical model producing or having this this cascade processes, you would uh, automatically have uh, the uh, gamma ray boxes. Okay, so yeah, I completely misunderstood. Was the other way around? Thanks. So I, I have a, another question. To, yes. To Sergio. So my in fact I have many, but anyway, uh, the first one is about this uh, model that you have with actions. If mm -hmm. some extra constraint that you can obtain using direct detection, since action may couple also to quarks. I mean, in that sense, with direct detection, uh, or, the, 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 or, or 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 also or not complementary with maybe some action action searches. I mean, searches for action particles. Uh, the, 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 this, the, this is a misunderstanding what we've always ha been having. In this model that we present, using the Petit Queen mechanism, we uh, I, I can't uh, uh, actually uh, um, remind if I uh, in in today I use the word action. We try to avoid it because this is not the QCD axiom. This is not the, the axiom that solves the strong CP problem. This is just a pseudo scalar which is generated in the uh, same way that the that the um, strong CP problem action is generated, but this action doesn't couple with 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 quarks. So uh, you, this uh, uh, trying to measure uh, uh, coupling directly with the action with the uh, quarks uh, wouldn't be uh, fruitful. Uh, thank you. And other extra question, just just by curiosity, if your I mean in your model you have the a fee field that is a scalar, mm -hmm. but in principle you also can construct model in which you have fermions or vector like the intermediate state. Yes. So in that sense, I would expect that also you can add some extra. Apart to the box, you have some other energy distribution that are not boxes because some momentum are in the in the in the expressions. I don't know. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, let me share again my screen. I have a backup slide for that. Uh, so of course this intermediate state can be uh, 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 not it doesn't to be um, uh, a scalar. Let me go now share and so okay so in the case in which we had a, a fermion we would have a, a, some preferred emission in the in, in the in the in the in the rest frame. So in the rest frame, of course, this, this decay wouldn't be uh, isotropic. And here I am showing you only the case in which, let's say, once this uh, par intermediate particle, now a fermion, boosted, uh, suppose the preferred emission is in the forward direction. 
uh, regardless of, of, of how is uh, how is it done. So we would have uh, um, a main emission in the forward direction and less in the backward direction. So this uh, higher energy values would be larger populated than the the the, 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 the lower energy the, the the lower energy values. So what this would mean is that in the end, if we would have uh, any kind of of of, of a preferred uh, emission direction of emission, we would have this th this slope would be tilting between this and then of course we would have a background a background emission would have a negative slope and we, and we would have uh, uh, again this this kind of shape because the uh, lower energy values would be larger populated than the uh, larger energy values but uh, still we, 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 we've been working with this and uh, both cases so this this one clearly again keeps a, a hard uh, a hard Spectrum. It has a it has a hard cutoff, and in this scenario, although it doesn't look like, if we would uh, to analyze with uh, current background that we have, it would still uh, be distinguishable from a parallel background because this is a, 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 a it's not a log log plot. This is a, a linear linear plot. Uh, plot. So if you would uh, by eye try to plot an, an, a parallel here, you would still be able to distinguish it from the from the parallel background. Okay, thank you. Um, I, well, I have a question. Oh, sure. Joel, go on. Okay, sorry. Um, so I have a, a couple of questions also. Um, so you addressed uh, that phi could be uh, a fermion or a scalar, but what about psi? What about the dark matter? Um, how, do, how do things change if you assume that your dark matter is a, is a scalar? In the models that we've uh, been working on, we would uh, having we would always consider dark matter being a fermion, so a, either Majorana or Dirac fermion. In both cases, uh, we, you, you get the, the mission. The issue is that uh, we uh, there is not uh, uh, it's not influenced by the uh, by the angular distribution of this uh, intermediate state. So uh, this intermediate even intermediate states will be emitted. With a different angular spectrum, but still, due to kinematical reasons, they will still be gener uh, generated with with uh, a given momentum. So, if you add two scalars annihilating, let's say, in some particle physics model, to uh, either fermions or either or, or scalars, the, the the thing that we that the, that we need is that these intermediate states are emitted uh, with either with a momentum or without a momentum, but uh, in, in for a narrow or a wide uh, box. But uh, it it wouldn't uh, change. So if you have a model with scalar par uh, dark matter uh, dark matter that has this uh, cascade uh, behavior, and then again uh, a decay into into uh, photons, a, uh, a sizable decay into photons, you would still have uh, boxes. All right. Okay. So uh, following following that, uh, going back to to phi. So in order for it to, to couple to, to, uh, to photons, it uh, mm -hmm. either needs to be charged or it must couple to, to some sort of charged particle, right? Mm -hmm. So then the, the, the immediate question is if they can be produced at the LHC and if current searches could give bounds on, on, on the mass of phi or something like this. The, the usual uh, methods that we, the methods, the usual, uh, the, the, the particle physics models that we considered uh, have uh, had this 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 decay from this decay being produced via anomalies. So this is indeed a pseudo scalar as an as the axion, which decays via anomalies into two photons and again into uh, to uh, to uh, also to uh, to vector bosons Ws and Zs. Uh, however, we haven't considered the possibility of this this particles being produced. These actions, these pseudo scalars. Sorry, I don't want to use the word axiom because it leads to mi misunderstanding. These pseudo scalars, in this specific case, to be produced at the LHC, but we, we haven't uh, considered uh, the, the, how the LHC status is with respect to this. So, when when you say anomalies, you you mean uh, you you just specify uh, an, an operator, and, and and that's it, right? You don't assume uh, the uh, the virtual particles in in the in, in, in the 
No, uh, in, 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 in our cases, the virtual particles are, are, are uh, standard model fermions. OK. OK, I understand. OK, thank you. Um, OK, there are more questions on the Q&A. So um, there are three questions of Roberto, which I think have been asked. Is that correct, Roberto? Yes, that's correct. Yes, and OK, so I'll, now if there are no more questions, I'll pass to the Q&A questions. There's a question from Oscar Macias. I was wondering, can you get a boxed spectra from a well-motivated theoretical model, like a supersymmetric model, for instance? Um, well, indeed, I I, uh, I shown this this model that we worked in, in which is a, a, a well uh, motivated uh, model, and uh, the, the the other model that we also consider is a model that was proposed uh, in two thousand and eight by Nomura and Taylor, which also uh, gives uh, rises to the to to dark matter particles. I actually have a slide which summarizes that model. Uh, just to no, no, not to discuss on it, just to pr to present it. Uh, let me see if I can get it fast enough. Uh, you have to share your screen. Yes, yes. I, I I was searching for the for for the slide. I have it now. Uh, let me share again my screen. And uh, in this uh, particle physics model done by Nomura and Taylor, uh, in, in this reference, they actually uh, generate uh, this. Uh, the, the scenario is very similar to the one I I I I, I propose. In they have a, a, a U1 symmetry and use the pitchy queen mechanism. In this scenario, however, they were uh, they were trying initially to reproduce the the the, the Pamela electron positron. Uh, Excesses and then in this particle, they actually considered a, a lot of data, and they uh, settled um, a particle physics, mo physics model in which the dark matter particle has a mass of one TV, and the axion is very very light due to some uh, other um, elements, other obs observational uh, limits. So in this case, we would have a white box. But this is another uh, theoretically motivated uh, model that would be. Um, would generate these boxes. OK. Um, I think there's another question from Avelino Vicente. What about the decay length of the phi field? Uh, uh, does, it play, sorry. <laughs> sorry. does it play any role in this game? In particular, would a long decay length have any impact on the box properties? Um, so the, the 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 decay length of, uh, of in the in the in the limits I I I uh, I showed the decay length was is 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 uh, quite small in in galactic uh, scales. So we we don't expect the, the, this phi to propagate uh, far from the from the from the origin of this particle phi. However, if we had let, let's say a longer lived particle in which this this decay length still lies. Below the, the 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 ten or five or ten kiloparsecs, and you, this means that this particle would still decay inside the galaxy, uh, and we, the, the 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 shape of the of the box would be the same. So the, the, if we would have the the, the flux with a, with a, with a, with energy, however, of course, the detection, the map, the sky map that we will see from these boxes wouldn't be uh, exactly the one coming from the from the from the profile we're considering. So, for for example, if most of these particles phi are produ produced using a, 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 a cusped profile in the in galactic center, and these particles can, of course, since they're not charged, they can uh, drift out from the galactic center, we would see a larger flux coming from uh, higher latitudes and long uh, larger high la latitudes and longitudes uh, than the than the center itself. But the the, the, the shape, the, the spectrum, the energy spectrum of the of the um, of the box would be the same regardless of the decay length of the of the particle phi. Of course, if it's stable, then you wouldn't have any any any, any boxes because it wouldn't decay. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a question. In the case, oh hello, can you hear me? Yes. 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 
Yes. In the case where you have a very narrow box, um, mm -hmm. would, um, don't you have corrections, say, from a third emission of a emission of a third soft photon, which would uh, change the shape of that box? I uh, mean, that, uh, yes. Could you repeat that? Yeah, in the case where you have a very narrow box, mm -hmm. um, there I expect the intermediate particle to be fast, right? Um, you expect exactly. And so in this case, you would have uh, corrections from the emission of a third oh, sorry, soft slow, photon. Slow, sorry, slow, slow, sorry, slow, slow. Yes, for a narrow case, you expect the momentum of the intermediate state to be uh, low, and, okay. and in that case, it would mean it would mean this would mean that the energy that the particle gets added okay, or right, subtracted yeah, yes. is, is, is okay. Uh, uh, okay, so it's uh, fine. Okay, thank you. Yes, I misunderstood. Okay. There's, there's another question from one of us, I don't know uh, who, it says, does dark matter particle, Psi, need to be a fermion? Uh, psi so, needs Federico, to sorry, that, that was me. I already asked the question. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you were signed as Latin American. Yeah, okay, no, that's yeah, fine. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. So, I think... I, I have, a, yes, I have please. One, one more. It's just... What I mean, if you have considered the case in which your phi field is char electrically charged, in the sense that now it can also have bremsstrahlung by itself, plus the decay of maybe a photon mm. charged particle, or, if, if, or, if, 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 or if, electron, or something like that. If the particle would be uh, charged, then you, of course you would uh, completely destroy the, the boxes because you would have a diffusion where you have energy losses and you will emit, of course, uh, synchrotron radiation and different kinds of radiation. But uh, again, the, the, when this particle decays into photons, uh, since they, these particles would get uh, uh, randomly entangled in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the magnetic fields, you wouldn't have such a clear uh, let's say it's such a clear status of the particle phi at the moment of the decay. You would have this particle phi after the whole energy losses with different energies, with different uh, uh, directions of the momentum, and you wouldn't be able to claim these uh, clear kinematical edges that I was uh, explaining before. Mm, uh, thank you. Okay, so if there are no, I don't know, I don't see any more questions. So thanks again to Sergio for his interesting talk and to all of our viewers. <laughs> and OK, let's um, remind you that we'll meet again in, I think, two weeks for another webinar on physics. <laughs>